hi guys. What a beautiful, glorious day. Happy Groundhog Day. It's about 30 degrees and sunny. Uh, very light cloud cover in the sky right now. It's just a glorious day, so I'm getting out in the woods. Well, sort of. Down at one of my local parks here in good old Hughesville, USA. We're gonna make up some coffee and we're going to cook up some smoked sausage. And we're gonna do it on a twig stove. Stay with me, we're gonna have a little fun. Well, what a beautiful day. Absolutely beautiful day. Sun is shining, some high clouds, cirrus clouds in the sky. No chance of snow. It is just gorgeous out here. One thing you wanna always remember is, especially when it's sunny, but there's snow and ice everywhere like there is right now, protect your eyes. Wear sunglasses. Sun blindness or snow blindness is a real issue all that light gets reflected back up and into our eyes. So having a good pair of sunglasses to protect you is a must when you come out in the winter. Just make sure you have a good pair of sunglasses. Polarized will work, but something with, uh, with a good lens to protect you. You wanna keep the eyes you got. There's planes everywhere, it's awesome. I don't know if you're gonna see this contrail. You might be able to see it up there, but it's heading right for the sun, and there's the sun, it's super bright. But there's a contrail going right above us. I know you're probably not gonna see that one way up there as well. Another couple of them as we look off to the west. But yeah, so we've got, oh, about two or three inches in most places here. And there's a uh, layer of ice and hard pack underneath. That is making it interesting when walking, so watch your, your steps as well. But uh, this is fun, this is great. I'm dressed warm, I've got base layers, I've got mid-layer wool, I've got a heavy, heavy wool blend uh, undershirt, and then I've got a nice Under Armour sweatshirt on top. And then I've got uh, a light silk layer for my bottoms and a heavier line or heavier layer and then these uh, tactical pants so we're dressed warm i do have gloves and i'll show you my little day pack that i have just all my few little things in when we get to where we're going to set up which if you can see is way off there in the distance way out there i'll be back well we're here at the spot uh, we are on the 12th tee uh, of a disc golf course and i am at lime bluff park here in hughesville i'm at the very far south end about as far south as you can get um, here is my view i walked in along the tree line in fact, this tree line right here I walked in along. Real hard walking with, you know, two inches of snow at most. But most of it is ice and hard pack. And I kept slipping or breaking through just going down a, a half inch to an inch. But those of you who walk in this kind of stuff understand that takes its toll on you after a little bit. So, but this is my, uh, this is my little view. If I could camp here, I absolutely would. There's a tiny little stream that is obviously frozen over uh, right down in here but uh, other than that it's a beauty area uh, very very scenic and very uh, wildlife driven or very a lot of wildlife there's deer there are some bear uh, but there's foxes coyotes sometimes tons of birds the hawk population in our area has just exploded over the last 15 years or so at least and uh, anywhere you look now, you'll see red-tailed hawks. Uh, you'll see some of the other hawk 
uh, breeds flying through this area. But well, right now we're here at this table and walking in, I was looking for some dead branches or downed branches. I did find a couple, uh, nothing much, but really for a small twig stove that I'm going to be using today, that's, uh, that's going to get us a good start. But what I want to do is look up and down this tree line and find more of those types of branches. Stuff that's broken, but fallen in a lot of other, uh, a lot of this underbrush. And uh, we'll pick those up. We'll see what we can get. All right, we have a dead tree that's been here for quite a while. And uh, all these branches are dead. So I'm going to just take one, pop it right off there. That's got a bunch of little twigs. Let's bring it over here. A bunch of little twigs on it. So we'll pop those off and get them in my stove. And I'll, uh, I'll explain the stove and which one I have here in just a second. Well, we're here at our spot and I came in today, no backpack, but I did wear uh, this little, uh, or I guess not so little, this uh, fanny pack type thing, uh, this pack from a company called Kavu. Uh, and I've had this, I've had this probably six, seven years, maybe at least, maybe more. Um, don't even know if they're still made. Uh, when I was a sales rep for an outdoor company, this was, uh, this was a little, uh, purchase that I made because I wanted to. <clears throat> I thought it would be really cool to uh, to use on a small little day hike and uh, I've put a few things in there that we're going to go over here and um, I'm just going to show you. I brought a few little things. So I've got a bunch of stuff in here. I've got some food in here real quick. I'm going to stop shaking the camera by hitting this but I've got some food in here. I've got the stove in here. Uh, I've got some coffee in here that we're going to have here in just a little bit. I've got a spork. Um, I've got a uh, one of those uh, emergency blanket, those foil type blankets I've got in here as well. Um, some uh, duct tape, um, just some small uh, small things just in case something were to happen. Um, whether I had a, um, a physical injury, some kind of a motor injury. Um, with all the ice and snow and stuff, it's very easy to slip and, and trip and fall. So I've got some stuff in there. My phone is charged. I'm good to go on that. Um, so I've got a few things in here we're going to go over. Um, probably another good idea if you're, if you're planning on going out is to have an old ID card uh, here in the States, here in Pennsylvania. It's an old driver's license of mine. Uh, I've got down inside the front pocket. If this gets lost or if I become immobilized or something worse happens, um, other than my wallet, which is in my back pocket, I still have this as a, as a redundancy um, just in case somebody needs to contact me or get a hold of me somehow. Uh, they can do that by going through the bag and finding my ID. So let's go ahead and open this up. We're going to get some stuff started. All right, so here's our pack. Told you I'd show real quick what's in here. I've got uh, some extra memory cards for my camera or my phone. Yeah, my camera. Uh, here's that foil uh, emergency blanket, that solar blanket, or space blanket, really. There's the duct tape. And without giving too much info on this, uh, there's my, my ID, which uh, when you get a new ID, they put these little holes in them. So there's my Pennsylvania ID light, or ID. Uh, so that's just in there. It's an old one. It's not a valid driver's license anymore. Open up the other pocket here and in here we've got some of our fire stuff. Here's my fire starter, my fire steel. Uh, and we'll go into more detail on this one, but I've got that. 
I do have a redundancy uh, matches, some of these storm matches. I've got a, um, oh, the Bluet stove fuel tab. I do have a lighter just in case. And believe it or not, as a backup to the wood stove, I brought this tiny, tiny little Esbit pocket stove. And I have boiled water on this and uh, it, it's worked out pretty good. These little fuel tabs go perfect. They sit right in the middle. And just as a small little, it's titanium. So it's super lightweight, uh, but uh, it has the pot holders on it. And it makes it super easy to boil up a quick water and uh, make some coffee or a dehydrated meal. But like I said, this is a Bluet. Uh, this is one of the titanium little pocket stove, little foldable stove, folds right up, no problem. And uh, goes right back in this tiny little mesh bag. Uh, this is so small, you can put it in a pocket. You can put one or two of these fuel tabs down in there and actually have, I mean, there's my hand. You can see it's super tiny and it's so lightweight, I don't even feel it in the bag. And we've got a few more of these fuel tabs uh, just to make sure we don't run out of fuel today. Uh, we shouldn't need all of them. We've got plenty of wood, but just in case the wood, uh, which has been wet, doesn't take, we're good on that. And here I've got a pair of gloves, nothing fancy. I got some coffee in a bag. We're going to do a, uh, a little thing of coffee here in a minute. Nope, I do not have Cheetos. You've seen this before. These are wood shavings. Uh, I do have to find a, be a better little bag to put these in. Uh, I've got a couple of them at home, just haven't moved them over, but a whole bunch of little wood shavings uh, that I have just in this bag, just to keep them dry. Uh, so we're ha we have those. We have some smoked Johnsonville sausages that we're gonna do on a tiny little pan that I brought with me. So those are gonna get cooked up here in a little bit. And I brought mustard, mustard. Cause you gotta have mustard when you have sausages. All right, so we've got our sausages or mustard in our, pot, our pan. Titanium spork. Uh, this is a light my fire titanium spork. Su again, super, super lightweight but they're uh, almost indestructible and they're wonderful, wonderful to have. I have used the plastic ones, I have used metal ones, I've used wood ones to be honest and uh, they, they all work really well, but there's something about a titanium spork that, uh, that works really, really super well. And then we're gonna break out this little anodized aluminum Brunton kettle. So we're going to make some coffee and uh, probably do a cowboy coffee on that. We'll see that here in a minute as well. And here is the Vargo stainless steel hexagon wood stove. And inside the little packet or the little uh, Velcro container, I've got again some more of these blue it uh, these blue it fuel tabs. Uh, these are perfect to get a fire started, uh, but this is this is the titanium wood stove, and you can see it's all brown and soot and gross because I've used it. But we'll uh, we'll get this all kind of put together here, and beautiful little wood stove. What I would like to do is get a few holes drilled. Uh, I'm going to do that here uh, as the weather gets a little bit better, but drill a few holes in the side panels here. The bottom is, is uh, has the bunch of the air holes, which works pretty well, but uh, it gets a little smoky uh, with not enough air coming into it. Um, on the front, if we can actually keep this together. On the front, it has this little door. Um, you can close it just to keep it from uh, from blowing around or whatnot, but I, I never, I probably never close it. I always leave it open so that you can lay your sticks right inside. I mean, you guys know a twig stove. You know how these work. You've seen them. Uh, Doug Linker 
uh, Doug Outside, who's now Doug Linker. Um, he has, shout out Doug, um, he has uh, used tons of twig stoves. If you haven't seen his video, I'll put a link down in the bottom here, uh, down in the description uh, to his channel, and you can check out his uh, twig stove videos. Um, but uh, this is one of my favorites. Now, it's not a titanium. They, Vargo Outdoors does have the titanium wood stove. This is the stainless steel. So it's a little heavier, but I mean, honestly, I'll have to get the specs on it and see if I can't get that for you. But I don't have that right offhand. It's, I can't imagine more than 10 or 12 ounces, um, maybe a little heavier than that, but uh, not by much. And a little treat for here in the end. We've got a Quest protein cookie. Uh, these are 15 grams protein uh, chocolate chip cookie. It has less than one gram of sugar. So uh, for those of us that need to watch our sugar and can't uh, ingest a lot of sugar, this, uh, this is gonna be good. Nine grams of protein. It's no gluten containing ingredients, so it is gluten free. Soft and chewy, it says, I have not tried these. So I'm gonna give this a try here uh, while we're out here today. Um, on the back, total fat grams, 17. Cholesterol, 30 milligrams. Sodium, 220. Uh, not too bad. Um, carbs, 19 grams of carbs. Again, less than one gram of sugar. And protein, 15 grams. So one, one serving, uh, or one cookie is one serving size. So thankfully, I don't have to break this up into little bits for a single serving. And of course, we can't forget, we have a stainless steel clean canteen. This is the 40 ounce single wall bottle. So I can use this over a fire and I've done this on a lot of other trips. Uh, 40 ounces, it is full of water from home. So I don't need to worry about boiling it, but I, I kind of have to for coffee. Um, so we'll get this cooked up. And then I've got for some drink, I have one of my stainless steel Ole Camp Space Saver mugs, which is perfect because any of the bottles fit right down inside there. It does have the graduations both inside and outside. This is one of the 16 ounce cups, uh, so it works really well. I've got a few dents in it and uh, burned up the bottom a little bit, although this the sticker is still on the bottom. I can't believe it. I've used that over fire a bunch of times, but uh, it cleans up nice. It is stainless steel. So uh, we're going to get this uh, going here in a little bit and uh, get cooking. But that's everything that's in this, uh, this little pack. Again, this is from Kavu. Hopefully you can see it there. Uh, true outdoor wear is what the, ta what the uh, patch on the front says. But it's camo. It's, it's, you know, just an off style of camo. But it works. It wasn't too bad. It has a, um, a padded back to it. Not too padded, but again, I mean, it's just a small little thing. You don't need much padding. Uh, simple webbing. I think it's a two inch webbing uh, for the belt. And then it's got a, a regular um, clip. Uh, that goes in on the front and you can adjust obviously the size i'm a little bit bigger of a guy so uh this is almost at its maximum but uh, i wear a 38 pant and this fits me no problem in fact has a lot of extra room so uh, works out really well for these small little day trips and i don't have to worry about a big backpack uh, on my back so we're on a uh, wood picnic table which obviously wood is burnable so i can't set this stove right down on top of said wood so what i did i went and found this piece of bark nothing uh, nothing tremendous but it's the same piece of bark that was on uh on that uh that tree that i was taking branches off so i'm using this as kind of a base it's not super flat or sturdy but it is going to act as a base that i can put this stove on you want to be careful because you want to make sure that there's enough air going to come up into this thing so uh, by building let me get this stuff out of the way here by building up a little bit of the sides like I've done here we can then set our stove down and should get enough height to uh, keep this up high and that's pretty good you want to make it as level as you can because again we're going to be putting a, uh, a pot 
and then a little pan on here. So I like that. That actually works pretty well. Um, it is closed off underneath. So all the ash is going to fall on this, uh, this bark. So that'll be good. Uh, that'll collect it that way. It doesn't sit on the table and ruin the table. Um, but it's cold enough and there is a little bit of ice and snow here on the uh, the other side of this table uh, that I can I can use if things get out of control. Just getting the wood processed here real quick. The littlest stuff is going to be the first stuff to go on followed by and these might be a little bit thick yet. These will be uh, the fuel sticks for here once we get into uh, the actual fire burning so we'll put those in a separate pile we've got our uh, our small kindling or all sm our small pieces right here and then we've got the tiniest of the tiny pieces i've got a piece of uh this blue it's uh blew it tab fuel tab i'm gonna go ahead and put that right in there i do have a lighter um but first we got to keep going on these sticks because we want to make sure once we get this lit it stays lit and gives us a nice fire that we can boil our water on as well as cook up these sausages. Sausages! Because who doesn't love sausages on a nice cold sunny day? This guy does. Always prepare more wood than you think you're going to need because you will burn through the wood a little bit quicker than you think. Uh, those of you who have used twig stoves or little wood stoves know exactly what I mean. Um, now what I've also done is I've oriented the stove not, ju not just toward me so I can, uh, I can use this, but also the wind is coming a little bit that direction, which is from the west. Uh, so that'll be behind the stove. So there'll be enough air coming in underneath uh, to, to get this going really, really nicely. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because uh, this is not the first time I've used the stove. I've used the stove a lot up on the Loyal Sock Trail here in Pennsylvania. I've through hiked it uh, a couple of times and, and hiked quite a few times on it. And uh, we're gonna have Gonna have some more opportunities here, probably this spring and summer. Uh, I'd like to go up and hike it. Probably not solo like I do on uh, some of the other paths or, or trails around this area. Um, it's a little, a lot more rocky. Um, and those of you who have been on that trail, if, if you have, understand Pennsylvania is rock. And, uh, and that's a lot of what it is. Appalachian Mountain rock that, uh, that has been welled up in this area. And, is on every trail in every field in every part of the woods that you can imagine um, and it's it's all over so but I say that I could not find any today everything's covered in snow and ice so it probably wouldn't have worked anyway but uh, to use as the base for this fire oh well all right well here's the Vargo stainless steel wood stove I've got it all set up I've got a small piece of bark in here to act as the base for the fire. So I'm going to put the blue it fuel tab down in here. We're going to get that lit here in a minute. Here are some of our, uh, our sticks and some of our fuel. I've got some more sitting beside me there, some more sitting beside me here. And we are going to use most likely a lighter because everything is really, really cold today. So anyway, we're going to get this lit and, uh, and get a fire started. Two thousand years later. Well, this is why you always bring extra lighters or ways of lighting stuff. Okay. All right, so our fire is burning pretty darn good. We're getting our pan warmed up. I did not bring any oil, which is okay. We don't necessarily need it, although it might have been good to have a little bit of it. I 
I'm going to keep that door closed as much as I can so that it keeps the heat all right inside. And again, it's using the, uh, the fuel very efficiently. These little stoves are great when it comes to, uh, to cooking and using the fuel. So we put a few sticks in there and we're going to break out our good old buck compadre. You've seen me use this knife here before. And we're going to cut up Not doing any kind of special cooking or anything like that, but uh, I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of food other than soup out in the woods today. So we got those cooked up or cut up. I did not bring salt or pepper or, you know, any of the other, oh, losing one, salt, salt or pepper or any of the other spices. Oh yeah, boy. Let's bring you in on this. Love that sizzle. Cooking real nicely. Still have great coals in the bottom, but just keep adding wood. Make sure it stays somewhat of the uh, of a consistent temperature, and you won't really need to do anything to get the. If for whatever reason you uh, you don't stay up with adding wood, you just put these pieces of wood down in there, and they uh, they go, they go right away. But if you do find yourself, just open up the door. It'll let in a little bit more air. And you get those flames cooking right up. We'll just close it a little bit, that way we don't lose any, uh, lose any wood. One thing to also be mindful of is your handle and where it is in relation to where most of the heat and the smoke is going. As you can see, the smoke is drifting off to the northeast or to my right. And uh, it's, yes, yeah, look at that, it's catching the base on fire. That's why we didn't use it right on the table. But anyway, uh, you, you can see where all this heat is going. It's going right toward the handle. So always test it before you go to lift it up. Oh, lots of heat. I'm burning them. Save the sausages. I'll tell you what. It really does smell as good as it looks. I am by no means a pro at cooking in the outdoors. Let me reassure you. But you too can have a nice meal in the woods. 
or on the edge of the woods. All right, sausages are done. They were pre-cooked, but I wanted to get them all nice and browned and, uh, and heated up. So those are done and they're just sitting on some of the leftover wood. Because it's a wood table, and the uh, char or the uh, bark was starting to catch fire underneath. Uh, the table was starting to get really, really hot, so I uh, I put the wood stove out, and I transitioned over to uh, this uh, this micro or this titanium esbit pocket stove, this uh, super light one, super lightweight one, and we've got the fuel tab lit, and it's uh, it's starting to catch fire again. All the heat is going out to here. Um, but it's not too bad, so we're going to go ahead and we've already got water in our aluminum kettle. Let's get that thing boiling. Alright, so while we're waiting on our coffee water to boil, I'm trying some of these sausages. They're a New Orleans flavor from Johnsonville. Oh my goodness, they are so good. Maybe not New Orleans, I think it's Louisiana. But it's um, it's spicy, but it's so good. And it's really nice and warm. Very juicy, flavorful. I mean, look where I'm sitting. It's beautiful. There's nobody out here. There's planes constantly flying overhead because that's where we're at here in the Northeast. But uh, it's cold. It's probably down to 28, 29. But these sausages are really good. I'll probably finish them before uh, before getting to the coffee, but that's all right. Make it a double. Look at that steam. Can you see the steam? No? That's all right. Oh, oh, maybe. There's steam coming off of that. There's a lot of conversations about men's health and uh and how to deal with it whether medication or you know other means but uh i'm a firm believer in if you are a fan of the outdoors and if you're watching this obviously you are um you know get out get outside i've, I've mentioned it i think probably in all of my videos if you get a chance to get outside uh get in the woods explore um my uh my instagram channel don't forget i gotta plug that my instagram channel getting lost with eli um grown tremendously and i can't thank everybody enough started uh that channel back in october just this last october and i'm already up to 237 i think it was as of today uh followers so cheers thank you very much for that um i look forward to uh to more and and greater content that's going to be coming out um more stuff that i can do for uh for everybody more stuff that i can do for you um better videos better quality videos longer videos um maybe not necessarily hour or two hour videos but um, you know, longer trips, doing uh, doing some overnights and stuff like that again. Um, of course, it's middle of winter. You can see the the breath uh, that I have my my breath. You can see it's it's definitely below 30. I didn't bring a thermometer with me, of course, um, but it is quite uh, quite chilly out, and it's it's getting chillier real quick. The snowpack and the ice pack on the ground certainly doesn't help get it warm, but. Uh, but we manage, you know, it's a Saturday afternoon here, Groundhog Day, and uh, it's just a great, great time. I enjoy getting out, uh, getting some fresh air, getting the sun. Even even though it's cold, you still get that sun, and uh, you get all the, the nutrients and everything from it. But 
um, get out and and enjoy the outdoors. Find yourself, um, as I say on my Instagram channel, get lost. You know, uh, get yourself out in the out in the wilderness and and just explore. Don't worry about phones. Don't worry about tablets and computers and the internet and just disconnect from that world while you're outdoors you'll have so much more fun it'll be a lot better for you um, you'll feel healthier you'll feel more alive i love it i know most of you love it and uh so for for men's health and, and men out there you know i've gone through depression uh, i've gone through some real rough times in life from from my divorce uh many years ago or several years ago to uh to just you know personal things going on with jobs and with life uh, we all find difficult times and you know everybody has a, a way of handling that but uh, get outdoors and uh, you'll find yourself becoming a lot happier uh, if you can just spend some time outdoors you don't have to plan a, a monster 10-day trip or four-day trip or uh, or anything like that e even just a, an, a simple afternoon like this you know getting outside and enjoying the time is enough for your head you know it'll it'll help your heart and your head it'll get things back to back to where you want to be and you might even find you enjoy it more uh, either by yourself or with somebody um, I've got uh, I've got a brother uh, who you'll be seeing on some future videos uh, Jake he's gonna be coming along on some trips he's he's very amped about it and so am I um, one of my other brothers Ben is probably gonna do it as well so you might see some new faces coming along uh, here in uh, in the short time so uh, yeah we're just watching the kettle uh, cooking along here let me see if I can show you here kettles warming warming up really good nice little flame on the underside there from that little fuel tab and that titanium pocket stove from Esbit. Uh, in any case this is definitely it's getting warm which is really nice you can see the flames kind of licking around the sides but I'm still I'm still gnawing on this uh, <laughs> sausage. It's cooling down quick, of course, but I mean, it's February and uh, it's a good time. You know what I didn't use? I just realized that I was so excited about eating this is my mustard packet. I didn't use it. I had all these great plans of mustard with my sausage ah, that's all right it's okay it's good it's okay you know why because it is last piece cheers pan's empty look at that pan <laughs> See, I can't do that either. That's uh, that's another guy I watch. Scrambled O. He's funny. I love his stuff. He's got he's got some really cool things. He does a lot of cool cooking, and uh, he's got some neat neat uh, bushcraft stuff. His bushcraft A to Z, as well as the treehouse uh, videos that he's been working. I'll throw a link down in the description as well for for his his uh, his channel. So you can check out some of his videos. I, I kind of look forward to doing those kinds of videos and those kinds of projects that you see on on some of these guys, on some of their channels. Um, so, but yeah, so I get inspiration from a lot of you guys um, and a lot of the YouTube stars, uh, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of the YouTube guys out there... Um, Instagram, uh, a lot of the people that I follow on Instagram, again, thank you. Um, a lot of inspiration. There's inspiration around us. You just got to see it. You got to use it. You got to pick it up and throw it in your pocket so you can use it. And uh, so guys like Joe Robinette, Scrambledo, Doug Linker, um, all these guys, uh, Bushcraft Nick, you're uh, you're just getting into this, and uh, I've. I've been following you for a little while. I uh, appreciate watching your stuff as well. Um, a whole bunch of others that I, I, I just I can't name everybody. So, But there's enough inspiration out there that, uh, that even you can do this. Um, get knowledge first. Go through some classes or some courses. 
um, learn some of this stuff because you, you don't want to just go out in the woods with no knowledge whatsoever. Use your brain, that's your most powerful tool. You know, we've got knives, we've got fire starters, we've got axes, we've got saws, you name it. Um, even something as simple as a lighter, but unless you know how to use the stuff using your brain, you, you know, they're just tools, they're, they're just whatever. So getting yourself schooled and learning this stuff is, uh, is, is the tool, the preferred tool that you want to have in your, in your arsenal at all times. Don't rely on, uh, you know, a handgun for personal protection unless you know how to use it. Don't rely on a knife to be able to start a fire unless you've been able to do it before. Having redundancies and backups, never a bad thing. It's always good to have extra, as you saw I do. Um, just in case something doesn't work, you can go a different route. Um, but having fun with it is, is the other part. Clearing your mind and, uh, and having fun, that's got to be the best part about it. Not quite boiling, but it is nice and hot. Went ahead and threw another fuel tab on there. The first one I was using was almost out, and the water hasn't quite boiled just yet. So threw another one on there, and it is definitely going. Boil that water. Oh, she's boiling. She's boiling beautifully. Oh, look at that boil. She boiling. Okay, so we've got our boiling water already. Got some coffee grounds down in the cup. We're just gonna do it all cowboy way. And we'll just take it up to that 16 ounce line. Almost all of the kettle, we'll just let that sit. Okay, so we're gonna take our kettle off the fire here. And again, this is all the stove is. This is just a tiny little Esbit titanium stove with a, uh, with a fuel tab on it. And we're just gonna let that kind of burn itself out here. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and stir our coffee. I may have put a little too much coffee grounds in there, but that's okay. We'll just stir it around in there. We're gonna let it sit. And then here in a second, we are going to add some cold water, which will make the grounds sink, and we can drink it. That's a big jet. Quite a few people up on that sucker. Just a tad bit of cold water. Mm. 
All right, our kettle is all but cooled down. I mean, it's cold to the touch now. This uh, anodized aluminum is pretty awesome. Um, this is a Brunton kettle. Real easy. The handle just kind of swings out of the way when you don't need it. It doesn't move any further than the middle point here, uh, but then it lays flat on this side. So, um, real nice. Actually, this is the first time I have really used it out in um, out in the out in the wild. First time I've taken it for a walk, and uh, it worked beautifully. I'm going to continue to use this when I go on trips or um, or overnights. I will utilize the inside with some of my food stuffs. And, uh, and use that inside cavity. That way it's not just a, uh, oh, just a, a kettle with nothing in it. While our coffee is cooling, uh, the, uh, this little pocket stove, again, awesome little titanium Esbit pocket stove. Uh, just uses the fuel tabs. Uh, you can use a gel uh, for your fire. Um, I guess you probably could use wood, but realistically, you're not going to get anything out of it. Um, you can use it as a pot stand uh, with some fire around it, but again, that, that's almost impossible for the size. This is just absolutely, like I said, perfect for the fuel tab. Um, one was almost enough for my kettle to get boiling. Two got it absolutely rocking. So. Uh, always having at least a few. Again, one is great, two is backup, three is perfect. So having that uh, that option uh, to uh, to boil that water and get that going was perfect. Uh, especially since my wood base for my wood stove went up in flames. It's wood for a wood stove, and it burned. Okay. I was trying to find a rock. I can't find rocks in this. I mean, could you find rocks underneath all that? Probably not. Well, thank you for coming with me today. It was really nice to get out and enjoy the outdoors, even for just a few hours like I did. Walking back to my car now and uh, getting ready to get on out of here. It is cold. Temperature dropped a lot just in the last couple of hours. When I got here, it was supposed to be 30 or supposedly 30 outside. It's probably 25, maybe 24. But uh, yeah, it's, the sun's going down. We don't have that far until the sun does go down completely. I'll see if I can catch it here. There you might be able to see just a little. Let's see if I can profile. Profile? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. No, okay. Well, anyway, we're gonna get on out of here and uh, go warm up coffee was great that was probably one of the first times I had tried that of, uh, of just throwing I've done it before but it was never that good and uh, I'm gonna stop walking because I keep bouncing the camera but uh, this time you know I, I threw it in put some cold water in just a little bit afterward and let the ground settle it was fantastic it was really really good you get down to the end where it's really really soupy of ground you just throw it out uh, use some of the snow to kind of rinse or kind of move the grounds around inside my cup and get them out. So I'll wash it out really good when I get home and, uh, and wash off my stove and whatnot. 
but uh, yeah, it was it was fun. It was good to get out and uh, and enjoy the outdoors. Again, real cold. Uh, my glasses are actually fogging up a little bit because <laughs> because I'm breathing warm air, and the cold air around is uh, is condensing that warm air. So anyway, thanks for coming along. Thanks for getting lost with me. Check out my Instagram, Getting Lost with Eli and you'll find pictures both of this trip and of other trips before and, and other things that I do as far as photography wise and, and other pictures. And uh, you know, hit the subscribe button on my Instagram, but also here on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell so you can get reminders and, uh, and notifications of when I post new programming. If you have any other questions, you have any concerns or anything like that, put them down in the comments and I'll get to each one of those comments as soon as possible. Again, I'll throw some links in here for some of the gear that I was using today, as well as some of the, uh, the folks that I referenced uh, during today's video. So uh, thanks again. Thanks for getting lost, and I hope you have a great day. I'm walking backward in the snow and the ice. Bye-bye. All right, walking back to the car. Half of a rabbit. Those rabbit's feet weren't that great. He got torn up by what looks like a coyote or a hawk. Wow. Yeah, I don't see the rest of him. So I'm guessing it was a hawk that uh, grabbed it out of the bushes and dropped it or something real close. <laughs>